Now, have you ever sat through a concert of Indian classical music or listened to recordings, wondering how all the musicians keep track of the complex rhythms, patterns, and meters, and strict melodic intervals that they all adhere to at the same time, seeming to improvise and invent ideas on the spot? Of course, we don't absolutely have to analyze such an awesome phenomenon in order to appreciate it, but by looking a little deeper, we can see how a system of musical expression has evolved, which possesses both high mathematical precision and mystical beauty. A lot of us are good visual learners, and fortunately, Indian master musicians have come up with a great visual aid in teaching rhythmic patterns, or talas, based on the hand. Now, each finger has three articulations behind the knuckles, also a fingertip comprising four beats. So we have a picture of 16 beats. Our thumb is the counter that can count each of the beats of the 16. This rhythmic approach is also supported by a vocal pattern, which is memorized by simple repetition. Another way we have of tracking the 16 beats is by clapping hands on beats one and five. In other words, at the first beat of the group of four, then on the beat of the second group, the first beat, and so on. Actually, on the third group of four, we do not clap. On the fourth group of four, we do clap again, so it orients us toward the full cycle of 16 beats, which is known as tin tal. So we're able to keep track like that. So let's learn a little bit of tin tal, the 16 beat cycle. Slowly at first with a verbal pattern. Da, da, dun, dun. That's the first four beats. In the second four beats, we begin to divide a beat into two and divide a beat into four. Dina, dina is the fifth beat. Tiki, tiki is the four sixteenth notes, as it were, of the sixth beat. Da, da, dun, dun. Dina, tiki, tiki, te. And here we have the eighth beat, empty another way to track the pattern. Da, da, dun, dun, di na tiki tiki te. Da, da, dun, dun, di na tiki tiki te. So here we have two groups of eight, which are symmetrical, repeating eight and eight. Now this can go on forever in an Indian piece, and this is really the foundation of the pulse of a piece in Tin Tao. And by the time you add the layers of improvisation and the passion that goes into the music, this 16 beat has to be felt by all the musicians. The other problem is these pieces can go on a very, very long time, and we need to find a way of ending the piece together so we reach consensus and everyone stops at the same time. And there's a device called the Tehai, where there's a different grouping. The last eight beats in fact, in the Tehai, are organized into three plus three plus two. So those groups telegraph to all the, in the instrumentalists that it's time for the piece to stop, and then that magical silence happens. And I'll show you the Tehai with it as well. So we'll do one complete round of Tintal, and then we'll do the next one with the three plus three plus two ending. And I'm going to try to use a little click track that I have with an Indian sounding rhythm to it. Da, da, dun, dun, di na tiki tiki te. Da, da, dun, dun, di na tiki tiki te. Da, da, dun, dun, di na tiki tiki te. Di na tiki tiki te. Di na tiki tiki te. Di na tiki tiki da. And that last da, by the way, is number one. It's as if the whole piece, no matter how long it's gone on, it wants to end on number one, unity. So it goes through the 16 and, it, and goes back to the beginning. But again, after the Tehai, it stops. Now turning to the Indian raga, or fixed intervallic melody, let's do a little bit of math first. I know you must be thinking, what does this have to do with music? Well, when I found a recording of 54 beautiful ragas, each a slightly different 
sequence of intervals. Again, we're, based, we're basing it on taking any seven notes of the 12 note chromatic. So let me bring up the complete chromatic scale on this little keyboard I have. So in Western music, we take seven of those 12 notes to make a scale, such as a do, re, mi scale, major scale. That's fine. And the eighth note, the last note, is the eighth note, same as the first, a minor scale. A little bit more interesting. There are a couple of notes that are flatted going down. Here's another. Western scale we use sometimes, we hear a Dorian mode. So imagine those th three scales or so uh, keep us satisfied melodically. But Indian music, on the other hand, is only interested in melody. There's very little sense of harmonic progression in Indian music. So the melody is everything and expresses every one of those 54 ragas, for instance expresses a different emotion. It could be a state of nature, like a morning raga or an evening raga. So here are seven notes organized into a raga. It's called Bhairav. Listen to how interesting it is. There's no real common Western scale that goes right into a half-step motion. This is made of a string, really, of a bunch of half steps, which give it a particular kind of exotic tension. So imagine taking those intervals and combine, combining with the 16-beat cycle and all the amazing percussion instruments, and also the drone instruments, such as tambura. Tambura is a string instrument that simply has three tones. It has the tonic, the basic home note in octave form, and then it has the note kind of halfway in between, the one, five, one. I wanted to play a little example of a tambura. So imagine that's one chord, as it were, that lasts throughout the entire piece. So it gives this, uh, the sense that there's a harmonic continuum, not a harmonic progression, over which are ragas and improvised passages, and kind of explorations of the rhythm as well. So I'm going to go back to my click track now, and I'm going to take the raga by rev, which I introduced you to, with all those half steps, and I'm going to put on my hat as a composer and compose a very, very simple, to be sure, kind of raga composition based on those notes. So let's go back to the beginning of our little click track. <laughs> 